how are you supposed to play a legit walking bass line if you're playing a song that has two chords in a bar? That only leaves you two beats to outline entire chords. What are you supposed to do there? Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and in this lesson, you're going to learn four walking bass line formulas that you can use to easily, breezily walk through changes that have two chords in a bar and do it in just minutes. <laughs> Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and becoming the best bassist you can be. And we're talking more about bass lines, uh, walking bass lines specifically today, uh, and what you can do if you need to walk over a chord progression that has two chords in a bar. If you're playing a walking bass line and you have a chord progression that has one chord per bar, you know, things are relatively, you know, relatively straightforward. You've got four whole beats, you have enough space, and you can literally play all the notes in a chord. If you had, for example, a C major 7 chord, you could play C, E, G, B, and all the notes in that chord. So life is good. You don't need to do anything else. But when you only have two beats to do it, it does get trickier. You absolutely do not have the time or space to play every note in the chord. And the good news is you don't actually have to do that. So I want to show you four formulas or four different ways of approaching these kind of chord progressions. Formula one, super straightforward, and it goes like this. On the first beat of the chord, you're gonna play the root, and on the other beat, you'll play the fifth. Simple enough, right? On every single chord. So if we had a chord progression that went C major 7, A7, D minor 7, G7, then you start obviously with the C major 7. Of course the root is C, so you'd play that there, third fret on the A string, and then you'd, then you'd aim for the fifth of that C. Of course the fifth of C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a G, and you could play that up here, the uh, fifth fret on the D string, the, C, uh, the G above the C rather, or you could also play it below on this G here, the third fret on the E string. Either is fine uh, for the moment, but let's use this G below this time around. Uh, and so that's all you play for the C major chord. You go one, two. Yep, one, two, three, four, one, two. C major chord taken care of. Two beats, that is all you get, yeah? Now for the A7 chord, again, you start on the A, the root of the chord. So you can play it there, you can play it there. I'm gonna go down here. Uh, so you play the root of the chord and then simply pay, play the fifth, which in this case is an E, yeah? Now you could also play the E down here, the open E string, but that doesn't really leave us anywhere to go. So I'm going to play this E right here. So, so far this is what we have. One, five, one, five. Sweet. One full bar of walking so far. Okay, next, on our D minor 7 chord, of course we're going to start with the D. Yeah, and what's the fifth of the D? It's A. Again, we have options here. We could play the A above the D, but right now let's use the A below. Uh, no particular reason this time, just because, you know. Uh, and that leads us to our final chord, the G7. Now, because we landed on this A right here, it probably makes the most sense to play this G that's right near it. It's going to give you a much smoother line than if you jumped up to this G. Yeah, so if you were... Versus... Much nicer than this kind of jarring. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah? So down to this G here. But when we get to this G, all we do again is play the fifth above. In this case, we don't have a fifth below this G, uh, unless you had a five string bass, you could play the, the fifth below. Uh, but we want to play the fifth above, so we go here. Yeah? So that's the first formula. All together, it sounds like this. enough to start with, right? By the way, the tabs and notation as well as the backing track I'm using here, it's all available as a free download in case you want to practice all this stuff with the track and all that sort of thing. Uh, just click the link in the description, fill out the form on that page and I can send you everything 100% free. Uh, now formula number two is similar to the first one except instead of using the fifth of every chord, we'll use the third of every chord on the second beat. Yeah, Again, pretty simple concept. The whole phrase all up will sound like this. If we get into the whole nitty gritty, you'll notice that the root stays on each chord change. You've still got C, A, D, and G, 
And of course, we're starting on this C right here. Now the C of, uh, sorry, the C. The third of the C is E. Again, uh, we've got options. You could have used the E below, uh, but we just use the E above for now. So one, three over the C major chord, just like that. Then over the A7 chord, uh, of course you start on the A. You can play it here, you can play it here. Uh, now we haven't got a, a, a third below this. We haven't got a C sharp below this A on uh, this particular bass. So our only real option here is this C sharp right here, fourth fret on the A string. So the first half of the phrase goes like this. Two, three, and. Just like that. Now next we have our uh, D minor seven chord. Of course we'll start on the D. And the third of D minor is an F. So I'll play this one right here, third fret on the D string. And next we have our final chord, the G7. And the third of that chord is a B. Again, we've got a couple of options here. Uh, if we play this, uh, this G right here, because it's really close to the F that we just played, we can play the third above the G right here, or we can play the B below. Yeah, so we can go one, three, or we can go one, three. Now so far we've played the higher third on all the chords, so for this one, uh, let's go down to this B, otherwise if you kept just playing the higher one, you just kept going higher and higher and higher until you ran out of bass, you don't want that. Uh, so let's go down to this B, and that'll also actually set us up for when we go around and play it again, so check it out. Yeah, with the track. nothing but roots and thirds. Now if you get this far, you might think, well that's not outlining the whole chord, that's just a few notes of the chord. And you'd absolutely be 100% right. However, in these situations, you don't need to play the entire chord. Most of the time, you are playing with other people, right? You might be playing with a, a guitarist or a pianist or a melody instrument, and they can take care of the rest of the notes in the chord. You don't have to worry about them as much, as long as you're providing rock solid roots, you can get away with just about anything, uh, especially since these chords, they don't last that long anyway. In fact, you can get away with only playing one note in the entire chord and be fine, and that's exactly what I want to show you right now. So formula number three is playing the root of the chord and then playing a chromatic note above the next chord in the progression. So again, if we have C, A7, D minor, and G, we're gonna start on that C, have our rock solid root, and then we do a little dance of going two steps forward, one step back, yeah? So we're gonna look ahead to our next chord after the C, and we notice it's an A7, okay? That's great. All we do then is play the note chromatically above the A, so one fret above the A, so it's a B flat. So root, chromatic note above the next chord, and then the next chord. Yeah, now this B flat, this isn't in the C major seven chord. It's technically a wrong note, but because it's so close to our following chord, it leads into it so beautifully, it doesn't matter nearly as much. This is where things uh, kind of start to sound, you know, for lack of a better term, jazzy, because we start to use some chromatic notes. Okay, next, we landed on our A. So let's go two steps forward again and one step back. Looking forward, our next chord is a D minor seven. So what's the note chromatically above that D? It's an E flat. So that's what we play as our second note over the A. Again, it's not in the chord and it's not in the key, but it works because it leads into our next note. So we have chromatic note above the next chord. Duh. Pretty sweet, right? Now from our D, again, let's go two steps forward, one step back. So two steps forward goes to our G chord. What's a half step uh, or one fret above the G? It's an A flat or a G sharp. So let's put that as our second note over the D chord. So we're gonna play D and then an A flat. And then on our final chord, our G7, what's the chord that comes after the G? Now remember, this is just a continuous loop at this point. So uh, we're gonna actually circle back around to the C chord after this G7 chord, right? So that's our two steps forward. So what's one step, uh, half, well, sorry, what's a half step above C? Right there, it's a D flat. So that's what we'll put as our final note in the progression. So we have root, chromatic note above, root, chromatic note above, root, chromatic note above, root, chromatic note above, root, yeah? With the track, two, three, and. Yeah? 
Yeah, it sounds very different uh, than the first two examples, right? A little bit more dissonance, a little bit more color, and literally half the notes were from outside the key. But because we had our backing track playing the rest of the notes in the chord, it didn't matter at all. So we just did the chromatic notes above. Let's try doing the chromatic note below. This one follows the same kind of two steps forward, one step back principle. And at the end, the whole thing will sound like this. Yeah, let's break it down. As always, we're starting on our rock solid root, our C chord there. Now again, two steps forward, we're aiming for the A, and what's one uh, note, one half step below that A? It's a G sharp or an A flat. Same thing, and definitely outside the key, right? So we have C, G sharp, and then we go to the A, yeah? Ba, ba, da, sounds cool, right? So next we're on the A, and we're aiming for the D. Remember, two steps forward, one step back. So what's a half step below a D? Here's our D we want the note C sharp. Now this one is interesting because the C sharp is actually in the A7 chord, but it just happens to follow this particular chromatic approach tone concept. So now we have a mixture of notes that are inside and outside the key. Yeah, so so far we have this. Root, chromatic note below, root, chromatic note below, root. Yeah, so from the D, again, we wanna go two steps forward, to the G chord. What's uh, one half step below G? It's, again, G sharp, uh, sorry, G flat or F sharp right there. Now this one is definitely a wrong note. We're playing an F sharp over a D minor chord. The actual chord has an F in it. Yeah, but as a, it has an F as the third, not an F sharp. But again, this F sharp works well because it leads really well into the G right there. And when we get to that G, we want to aim for the next root, the C. Now, so this is what we're aiming for right here, this C. What's one fret below that? It's a B. And again, this is another one where we actually have a note in the chord while we follow this formula. That B is actually in the G chord, right? So all together, we get this, two, three, and. sweet, right? Of course, you don't have to stick to just one formula. You can mix and match and do pretty much whatever you like when you get comfortable. Uh, you might do, you know, one bar of root fifth, one bar of root third, one bar of upper chromatic approaches, and one bar of lower chromatic approaches. And if you did something like that, you would get this. Two, three, and. Third root, third upper chromatic approach, lower chromatic approach. Go again. Fifth, fifth, third, third, upper chromatic, lower chromatic. Yeah? So you get a whole bunch of variety with just those four formulas. Sounds great, right? Now, when you get comfy with all these, you won't have to think about them as much, but you do have to practice them in order to kind of get to that level. And if that's what you want to do, then I've got all the tabs and notation uh, for all the bass lines we've played in this lesson, plus the backing track I've been using, and I'd love to give it all to you absolutely free. If you just click right here, fill out the form on that page, and I'll send it to you 100% free, so you can get all the tabs and music and the track, so you can start practicing these formulas and get really good at playing two chords per bar. I'll see you in there.